Mr. Rosenberg, uh, I'd like to talk to you in my remaining few minutes about the issue of quantitative easing. You know, as we tr try to look at what's happening in our economy, a number of us are very concerned that the Federal Reserve has basically been propping up our credit for, uh, well, uh, to the tune of trillions of dollars now. And uh, we think there's a price that's going to be paid for that ultimately. Uh, first of all, is that correct? Has the quantitative easing put us into a posture of facing an increased risk of inflation or other uh, difficulties in the economy? And what will be the effect of the ending of the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing if and when the Fed ever does start actually easing off? Thank you, Senator. Well, I think the Fed has already started that process in terms of tapering, which is just to some extent reducing reducing the, the rate of growth of its balance sheet. It's a uh, very uh, complicated question, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Because so much of what happens in the marketplace is uh, psychological, so we'll draw some sort of linkage between what the Fed is doing with its balance sheet and say what the stock market is doing or what asset prices are doing. And what's interesting is that when you take a look at the past few years, uh, this money, in quotes, that has been created by the Fed through quantitative easing, well, 90% of that money creation has actually just ended up as excess reserves uh, on the balance sheets of the commercial banking system. So. You can really, as a central bank, create all the money you want, but if it just sits in the garage and doesn't get recirculated in the economy, uh, it's not really going to have a sustained inflationary impact. Uh, the way economists would view that is one of the reasons why we have not had an inflationary impulse is because the velocity of money or the turnover rate uh, has continued to decline and acted as a huge offset to the so-called money creation. So the inflation would ultimately come if and when we get the commercial banks engaged in a new credit cycle. And there's reasons why that's not happening from a regulatory standpoint. Uh, but the inflation would come from a classic uh, quantitative uh, qu quantity theory of money uh, identity. Uh, if we were to go through a new credit cycle, if that velocity of money begins to turn around and go higher, we go into a whole new credit cycle. Uh, then the inflation would ensue. Uh, there's other reasons why I think inflation could rise for reasons I said before, uh, but from a monetary standpoint, it's unclear to me that the quantitative easing is going to lead to inflation barring a new credit cycle formulating. Thank you. Mr. Greenstein, could you comment on this as well? I'm afraid I am not an expert on things like quantitative easing. I think Dr. Zandi could find, but uh, I hesitate to offer an opinion on something that I All right. really we'll don't let you have pass the then, uh, on. Dr. Zandi. Uh, I don't think inflation is an issue. No, uh, you know I think with a 6.7 percent unemployment rate and with labor force participation as low as it is, and a lot of uh, discouraged workers, I think we're a long way from monetary policy resulting in inflationary pressure. So I, I don't view that as a concern. At this point, do you view there to be a risk or concern uh, about the level of quantitative easing that we've seen so far? Uh, no, uh, I think that the Federal Reserve had no choice in what they did. They had to bring long-term interest rates down, mortgage rates down, to help the housing market support asset values. So I think they did what they had to do. It's, you know, obviously not uh, the most desirable policy, but we're not living in a very desirable time. So they did what they had to do. And there's downsides to it. I, you know, I, well, that's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think that the Fed can undertake this for the length of time and to the level of scope that it has without consequences. What are those downsides? Well, there's a number of potential downsides. You mentioned inflation, but I discount that. Uh, I think the most serious uh, potential issue are bubbles in asset markets. And you could argue, reasonably so, that there was bubble-like conditions in a number of emerging markets that are now getting wrung out because the Federal Reserve is changing policy. And so this dislocation, the turmoil in financial markets we're seeing right now is in part related to the Fed starting to exit. And there is a case, in my view, that's the most significant potential downside to what they're doing. And it could show up in other asset markets. You know, they're scouring the planet for uh, potential imbalances in the financial system. I mean, before the crisis, I wouldn't get a call from anybody any regulator about any problem. Now I get calls every week from every regulator all the time. You know, what should I be worried about? Which I view as quite encouraging. 
And so they're really thinking through what could be going wrong. But uh, at this point, uh, this bubble concern, it, it's a con legitimate concern. I, I just don't think it's a, an overwhelming one. And it's not a reason not to go down the path of quantitative easing. All right, thank you.